Well, welcome today for our candidate interview with Kevin Ritter, who is a candidate for the DeSoto City Council at large position. I am Natalie Bright, and on behalf of the Johnson County Public Policy Council, and on behalf of the DeSoto Chamber, I am interviewing Kevin today. Our questions were developed by the Johnson County Public Policy Council, which is comprised of 10 chambers of commerce serving Johnson County. We developed these questions, which are focused on business and community issues. But before we begin our question and answer session, Kevin, I'd like to provide an opportunity for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you chose to run for the DeSoto City Council at Large position. Well, thank you. Thank you, the, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to discuss these items today. I appreciate that. Well, my name is Kevin Ritter. I, uh, I moved to DeSoto back in 1977, so uh, I'm a homegrown uh, DeSotoan. Um, I graduated in 1986 from DeSoto High School. I have a wife, uh, um, been married for 33 years. I have two beautiful children, one boy named Dylan, he's 28, and one daughter named Haley, who is currently in college at Pittsburgh State. I'll throw a plug in for that. Um, and um, so my, my choice for running for council is is just this. It's uh, I started serving the city in 1987 by driving a, a local volunteer ambulance. Um, then I, I shortly joined the fire service after that and have served um, as DeSoto's fire chief uh, from 2000, 2010. Um, but I've been in the fire service for a long time, been given back to the community forever. And so I thought that I would, uh, there was an opening uh, on the council and, um, and uh, I was um, accepted onto the council and I've done my very best to still serve the community. Um, so from, from 1987 and, and, and plus the seven years of, of being on the council, um, I just, you know, I appreciate serving the citizens. I, uh, I have no other gain other than uh, keeping uh, the citizens happy and safe and um, doing the best for what's best for all. Well, Kevin, thank you for your service, and thank you for that background on yourself and why you're running. If you're ready, we're going to move into those Q&A questions. And the first one is, as a candidate, what are your top three policy issues? Well, I think the number one top top policy that that you know we've been working on, but we can do much better on, is uh, communication. And um, you know, from the from the council, from the city as a whole, uh, to the to the taxpayers and the citizens. And that's, um, we, we've done a good job, but we can do better. Um, and so uh, I think the number one is, is just being transparent and having that communication uh, improve through uh, either attendance to city council meetings or having community events where the, the citizens have their opportunity to uh, voice their concerns or, uh, and even voice the things that we do well so that we know uh, that we're on the right track. And um, so I think that's very important. I want to see, I'd like to see more of that and I, uh, and, and the transparency between uh, everything, I think just makes it better for all. And, uh, and so for number two, um, I, I think, you know, providing, um, you know, the best services that we can provide to our citizens is the most important thing that we can do. And that encompasses uh, a full range of things from, you know, the basic city services that we provide from streets or parks or water and wastewater um, and, and uh, fire and police. And I think that, um, you know, I have, I have uh, values in all of those and I, and I want to be able to provide those best services to, uh, to all the community at, um, and while keeping, um, you know, the taxes at a, at a, at a, a favorable, um, level that's, uh, that we can do those things. Um, but I, I and then number three, you know, uh, I, I want to make, I've always thought I've lived here for a long time. I've, I've either been in each one of these homes for, for, for a medical call or for a visit, but, I, I just want to make sure that the citizens know that 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 I am here for them, and um, that they can either email, contact me, um, call me twenty four seven. 
but I want to I want to make sure that we build DeSoto, continue to build DeSoto, that it's a place that we want our children or grandchildren uh, to be able to either continue to live here or return to DeSoto after they um, they move away for education or whatever for whatever reasons. And I want to I just want to make it a, a nice place to live and have a, a well-rounded town um, that that has a, a that's an affordable place to live and it has great values. Um, and so that, I'll do my very best. Well, thanks for sharing those priorities. So next question is, what are your views on the value that DeSoto citizens receive for their local tax dollars? And what changes, if any, would you propose to the city budget? So, uh, you know, the, um, the value that I think that the citizens get right now, um, you know, we're one of many taxing entities in the county. Um, and we may be uh, at the lower end of those taxing entities and to to maintain all those things that I, I mentioned before, uh, all the services that we provide, um, it, it we want to make sure that we we do it efficiently and effectively and affordably so that that citizens can uh, have the best services they have and um, be able to afford to live here. Um, cause that's, you know, that's something that a lot of folks say, you know, um, that they, they just can't afford to live here anymore. Um, and, um, so we, you know, we're doing a lot of things in town to help do that. And, um, and I think some of the other questions I'll be able to, to answer directly to those, uh, for the changes for me, you know, um, we did lower the mill rate this year for the city by a mill, um, and that's anticipation of some some other revenues that are going to come in in the future, um, based on economic development, based on uh, providing um, you know housing and things for for growth and incomes and taxes to, to to the tax base to be there, so that we can provide these other maintain the the services we provide now, but also continue to provide uh, even greater services. Um, so uh, you know I want to I strive to to continue to to make that whole balance of, of items work um, so that uh, they not only want to, they like to live here, they want to live here and they, they want to return or continue to have their families live here. Well, thank you. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about the city of DeSoto's development that has drastically increased due to the announcement of Panasonic. How would you help continue high quality growth in DeSoto and what role, if any, do you believe the city should play in economic development to bring jobs and capital investment to DeSoto? Yeah, so so the first one, um, I, you know, I think um, with the Panasonic announcement, it's one of one of many large industries that we have in town. Uh, we have several current ones, and this one will be the the largest. Um, but with with um, with the economic development council's help, the city staff, you know, even the state or federal level, we have brought this company here. Um, and uh, I know, you know, a lot of folks uh, see or read articles and and um, and think that it's not the best thing for DeSoto. But uh, I truly feel that if you don't believe everything that's written, because not everything is true, um, and you call or ask questions or or gain. Uh, the, the answers to your questions, which I'm very favorable in giving you, um, then uh, you'll understand that by having large corporations such as the one uh, that is, is new to us and um, any other commercial industries we have, um, we may have given tax incentives for those things. And that's, you know, it seems to be a naughty word. And I'm, uh, but I believe that our city has done a great job of building uh, development agreements with these these uh, large commercial or industries, including Panasonic, that provide the revenues that wouldn't have been provided if we wouldn't have brought uh, these industries to our hometown. So, um, you know, uh, I know it. You know, uh, people here like a hundred percent, or you know, with the apex that was brought for the the Panasonic in the whole state. Uh, is feeling probably the same way, but in our hometown, we're going to see, we will see revenues that will come and help us uh, not only um, 
help with our infrastructure for, um, you know, to include uh, possibly, up, well, we'll upgrade our, our water system, water plant, which will, you know, be one of the highest technology water plants that we can provide the best water service to our folks. It's going to, uh, that development will help and the development with all of our commercials um, will help us uh, upgrade our wastewater plant. So that's a, a great thing for everybody. Um, and then, um, but it will also provide revenues, um, you know, since that was vacant, vacant land, it, it really didn't raise any, any revenue. And even with incentives, um, this development will generate um, revenues to the city and to the citizens so that we can enhance um, our streets, our sidewalks, um, you know, work on the things that we want to work on downtown parks, uh, all the other things uh, that our citizens uh, want to uh, to have in, in their home uh, town and, and be able to utilize. So I, I think, um, I think it's an important piece, but I think uh, we continue to to work on um, those projects that are submitted, and 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 when we get in the later stages, we work through those things to make sure it's right for Desoto, and not just um, well we brought we brought this. You know, we we've done a lot of lot of work, um, and with a with a team um, to uh, to make this the best thing that will uh, come uh, for the citizens so that they can, you know, the jobs that are available, uh, the tax revenue that will be available in the future for our grandchildren and our, and, uh, and our children. So um, I think that piece is um, we have to continue to work as a team, but we also have to be transparent with our citizens. And not all of those agreements have always been um, relayed to the, to the public uh, you know, without somebody asking for them. Um, now, the one with Panasonic is probably still in the works, um, but when it comes out, you will see that that we uh, that we do have a, a benefit coming from that business, uh, not only for our citizens, the workforce around us, and including any new jobs it might generate for our current citizens, and um, and education and things of that nature. Uh, as far as the economic development. Um, Coming from the city of DeSoto by itself, um, I I think the two should be separate, uh, and there's multiple reasons for that. Um, the um, you know uh, the city always has a play in economic development because you know in in the end game you have to to work as a team, but but the economic development council um, is separate, and I think that's a great thing because. They're the ones out there doing the hard work to find what works best for us. And we don't, we can leave our, our city staff to work on things that they need to work on and, and continue to improve um, uh, on the things that they need to improve on for the citizens of DeSoto. But I, I believe that um, with them being separate and then once, once, you know, cause they work as a team to submit these projects and when the projects are, um, submitted and you go through all these processes and, and things, uh, the team may grow and the city's a part of that, but I, I think that it should be separate um, because I, I, I uh, most cities have economic development councils within them, but most of them do not run them. Uh, and there's obvious reasons for some of that. And I'll share one with you that, that comes to the top of my mind. Um, when a business wants to locate to a certain area, they may not want to just put up a sign that says, hey, we want to buy this land and invest in this community. Um, they uh, So they want to work with a third party entity such as the Economic Development Council to remain nameless and and um, and work through some of those issues because of competition and other things that are out there. And um, and I think it in this last project that worked best for us um, because with the. Um, uh, you know, with the hard work of the of, of our DeSoto Economic Council and the Kansas City Area Development Council, and then the state and the federal, we were able to land, you know, one of the largest projects in the state of Kansas. And I think it's something for us to be proud. Now, is there hurdles to overcome? Yes. Is there uncomfortable roads to drive down through for a little bit? But these things will change. 
um, and they will. I, I promise you, they will benefit us in in a huge way. They'll benefit us for a long time to come. But uh, for now, I think those two items should be separate. But they have to work as a team, and the council has to uh, work as a group um, and um, and and help them out to to be successful. Well, we're going to come. And lastly, I'll, I'll say that, uh, you know, I think citizen input has to be in there as well. And um, because, you know, when they hear these things uh, that are coming or they it's been announced and you know, what's that do to me, then the city has to be. I think the, the thing the city could improve on as a government is being transparent that, yes, it is coming. And yes, these are the changes. And this this is why and this is how we believe we're going to benefit you. Uh, and answer all those questions and, and take care of them. Well, that is a segue into the, some citizens have stated that the economic growth is devalue, devaluing DeSoto's kind of small town values. Do you feel growth diminishes the community's values? Why or why not? Well, so I'll go back in history a little bit. You know, the that the, uh, the ammunition plant was there in the 40s. Um, the population in in the early 40s during that time was um, in the upwards of 10,000, maybe 20,000 um, citizens living in DeSoto. I know when I moved here in 19 or 1977, it was a little over 2,000. So it was hard for me to believe that there was 40,000 people <laughs> lived in this small community, but there, but there was. And um, so I, I don't think that we, again, it comes to a balance. Um, we have to make sure we have the citizen input. We have to make sure we we have those activities and give them the chance to to voice their opinions, whether they want to come to an event or whether they want to call one or more council um, members or or the mayor and voice their concerns. I'm always open to the calls, emails, uh, coffees, um, and uh, and help um, get through their concerns. And then maybe take some of those back that that I cannot answer at the time uh, to the council and make sure we get that answer uh, back to those citizens that, that have inquired. So I don't know that it's I really don't think that it's devaluing our small town, but um, this is a city that that um, you know is in a suburb to the metro, and um, and we were going to see growth, but I think if it's handled properly like we've done, uh, and we make that. Um, a well-rounded process, then it won't, it, you know, change, change won't, may not be so bad. Um. Okay. Next question. What do you think are the three greatest opportunities or challenges for the DeSoto economy in the next 10 years? And how would you capitalize on those? You know, so the, the economy uh, nationwide, you know, we, we, we feel it from the top down. Um, and, um, so, you know, um, I think that the economy in DeSoto, um, reflects some of the, the outside, um, you know, some things that we can't control. Um, but I think, um, we have, um, by providing some of the things that we plan to provide with additional housing and, uh, afford affordability and, and being able to uh, maybe live on a fixed income and have a nice place to live in a small town with great values is going to be uh, beneficial um, to that. Um, I think the changes that the city will see um, from when I spoke earlier about some of the revenues that we may see from these commercial developments and uh, and the growth in and in, in providing housing. And that those two gross right there um, will help us uh, at the city council level, hopefully continue to uh, use those tax dollars properly, efficiently and effectively so that we can uh, provide um, an, a, you know, a great place, to, a great home to live where you want your kids to return to. And, um, and then at the same time, with those revenues coming in, we, you could see possibly see significant uh, deductions and mill rates. Um, but you know that that all comes down to from the top down, from the outside in. Um, but this year we were able to, to lower the mill rate. 
um, and uh, and still provide those services and provide extra services um, with the uh, proposed uh, upgrades to the water and sewer and wastewater plants. All right, last question. What most distinguishes you from your opponent in this race, making you the best suited to, stir to serve? Well, uh, one, thank you for this opportunity. Um, and, um, and two, you know, I'm, I'm an honest person who's lived here since, like I said, uh, I've grown up here since I was nine. I, I started serving the city in 1987. Um, and, uh, I've served on the council for seven years. I'd like, I would graciously like to serve another four years, uh, and continue to, um, to do what's right for all citizens because, um, their voice matters and and I want them to know that and and our availability to the citizens should be always be uh, on um, you know on top of the things that we prioritize you know if, if in in providing services as simple as city hall just you know when you walk in city hall I, you know there's in the past there's been concerns about um, you know don't get treated right at city hall I want to I want to continue to make sure that you do get treated right and that you um, that all of our city employees, all of our city staff, all of our city government treat people with um, respect and dignity and and listen to their concerns and then make the best educated um, decision based on the data and their input for what's best for DeSoto as a whole. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for participating today. Do you have any closing statements you'd like to make? Well, again, you know, I, um, I just, um, I, my phone is on 24 seven. Um, I, I, um, I'm here to serve. I've, I've served, I'm here to serve more. Um, I, uh, I, I've always had a be nice attitude, uh, and I transitioned this whole fire service in this town to be that way and be nice and, and respectful. And, and, um, and I always think that serving people is the best thing because um, you don't know when they're having their worst day and you don't know when they're having um, uh, issues that pertain to them unless they transition them to us. And, um, and I think communication and transparency and, um, and things of that nature are going to have to improve uh, so that we don't see results like this on surveys um, so that we can we can make those survey numbers go up. And, um, and by also providing the tax revenues that I spoke earlier, um, you know, I wanna be able to provide everything for these, these the citizens, all citizens in the city. So, you know, I lived here in a time when we didn't have a, a store and we've worked through those times and we did it together. And, um, and I wanna have parks and recreation things that, that folks and their families can enjoy and want to, uh, want to remain uh, living in DeSoto and, and have their, uh, their family return and, and live here as well. I wanna thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate that. And, uh, and I would appreciate anybody's support. Um, in this election and, and also um, feel free to, to contact me in the many ways that are available on your website uh, to do so. Well, thank you again, Kevin. We do appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to participate in this interview today. This does conclude the interview with Kevin Ritter for DeSoto City Council at Large's position. For more information about candidates, candidate forms and interviews, as well as advanced voting details, please visit www.votejoco.com. Also, please share this valuable voter resource with your colleagues, families, and friends. On behalf of the DeSoto Chamber of Commerce and the Johnson County Public Policy Council, thank you to everyone for taking advantage of this important opportunity to learn about the candidates. Best of luck in your campaign, Kevin. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great day. Thank you.